Thanksgiving morning of November, well, last year, 2012, Thanksgiving morning, I woke up and said, I really want to go to the University Lakes and see if the pelicans have arrived. Because every year I just love going there and seeing those pelicans because I love to watch them eat. This is really graceful because they all, you know, dunk at the same time and come up and dunk and come up. And it's kind of like a ballet, and I've always loved pelicans. They're maybe my favorite bird. And so that started a six-week saga for me. I got up every morning about six and went over to the lakes to look at those birds feeding. And what started happening was these egrets were over on the side and they were like getting in the way <laughs> of my photographs. And um, I took some videos of them feeding, but there was always a commotion with the egrets. And I kept thinking, why are they you know, doing this, why are they bothering me? But, you know, they were there. And so eventually I just started looking at them and I was like stunned because they were just beautiful. There were tons of them there. And um, they were also eating, but it was almost like a theater production when I watched them. Because early in the morning before the sun has totally come out, it's kind of, kind of cloudy and dark and they would emerge from the shadows and then go back into the shadows and some would come off from the right and some would come from the left. Every so often one would fly into the scene and one would fly out of the scene. And there was this little dark bird that kept walking in and out of the scene and I don't know what kind of bird he was, it was always dark. But um, it just started fascinating me. So I, instead of photographing the pelicans, I turned my camera and started photographing the egrets. And uh, when I looked at the photographs, it was almost like they were paintings in a way because I couldn't believe that they were posed like they were posed. Um, it just kind of amazed me. So for that whole next period, until LSU started again when the traffic got bad, I went out there every morning and photographed um, egrets and pelicans. And um, I did videos of the egrets eating sometimes, like catching fish. I have a five minute video where an egret is bobbing up and down and I have him catching a fish twice and that was kind of exciting except that um, I didn't really, I'm not a, I don't have a lot of experience with videos so I turned my camera to portrait mode and realized when I looked at it on my computer screen it automatically shows in landscape mode. So I have to turn like this to watch the egrets feeding. Eventually I'm going to learn how to rotate the whole movie. But anyway, um, when I was going to have a show at Baton Rouge Gallery, I kept fighting the fact that I wanted to show my bird pictures rather than paintings of the birds. And I thought about it a long time and I decided that I don't think I could have portrayed them any better in any medium than these photographs. Um, I didn't take them with a DSLR camera. I took them with, I don't know if you call it a point and shoot, but it's just a little camera that I walk around the lakes with sometimes. And um, some of the photographs were very, very dark and grainy, and I kind of liked that. Um, I'm not one who likes a lot of post-production work with digital photography because it starts hurting my back and neck when I sit in front of a computer for a long time. So, but believe it or not, I did sit in a computer, in front of a computer for a long time because I wanted to get them just right, but I didn't want to over adjust them so they looked fake or, you know, something like that. Um, but anyway, uh, I just, I had to decide whether I was going to print large or small and I tried printing both ways and I kept looking at the large ones because I I kept thinking I'm definitely printing large definitely large but when I looked at them small there was something much more intimate about the small photographs as opposed to the large photographs um, the small ones were like you were looking in from a distance uh, and I was I was kind of behind a tree looking at them because when I don't know if you photograph birds or walk around, but when you start walking towards them, they leave. So I kind of had to be um, hidden a little bit. And when I looked at the large photographs, it almost was like I was standing in the lake with the birds. And I didn't really want that to be what um, I was pre 
presenting. I really wanted it more to be an intimate peek into some mysterious something that was going on with the birds at the lakes. So that's how I kind of decided to do the small format. Um, these from here over I took in color and got the three on the end and all of those I took in black and white. Um, and the color ones, it was so um, dark and early that basically the only thing you could see was the orange of the bird beaks in the color ones or the yellow orange of some of the bird's feet. The black beaked egrets have yellowish feet and the orange beaked egrets have black feet and black legs. So um, it was real interesting <laughs> to get to know um, the egretology. <laughs> but anyway, that's kind of what this series is about. Um, I don't think I necessarily wanted every feather to be shown of, on these egrets. I mean, I'm not, I wouldn't call myself a bird photographer. I do photograph birds, but I think my intent is different than to have every single feather in focus and it to be per, a perfect representation of what the bird looks like. I'm looking at some of them and they look like they're very close in sequence. Did you use single shot or burst mode? Single shot. My camera doesn't have burst mode as far as I know. Okay. Well, it does. It would, uh, it would still be fast if you went that. Although, like you say, the PNS is it's almost like why bother some because of the older ones. <clears throat> yeah, mine, um, my camera is a very slow camera. I mean, I, I shoot it and then. Did does. you do any anticipation of what the birds were doing and holding the shutter halfway down, or did you just at the time take the picture? I at least held it halfway down to focus it, but that was but yeah. no anticipation. No, because you know what? I could not predict what was going on. I it was kind of freaky to even keep up with them because they were. Um, very active that morning, even though it doesn't look like they were active. It looks like they're all posed, but they were very, very active. So did you photograph them anywhere else beside the lakes? Um, yes, I did. I, um, I don't know why I became obsessed with birds, but I did. And I went to Lake Martin a number of times this spring to the rookery there to see the spoonbills and the egrets. I took um, swamp tours there. I also went down to Jefferson Island and photographed them there and to Avery Island. And I didn't realize when I went to Jefferson Island, I got back home and was looking at all my photographs of the egrets and the spoonbills. And I said, are those alligators? And there were tons of alligators in the water under the trees where I was photographing the birds and I was just so excited about seeing the birds that I didn't even realize that the place was just crawling with alligators. <laughs> so, but I've been down as many times as I could and um, we also went to Queen Bess Island one afternoon to take a um, two hour boat float around that bird rookery there because you're not allowed to go onto a bird rookery and um, got to see the pelicans and the young pelicans um, as they were, they weren't, some were babies, but the little bit older ones are still all white and they have a little heart-shaped brown uh, feather formation on their backs and they're so cute when they're that age, but they grow into the full-blown brown pelicans. And um, went out to Wine Island again in May to see what that condi the condition of that island was. And there were pelicans and all kinds of shorebirds on that island, but that island, I don't think it's gonna be here much longer. Uh, we, I've been out there for the last three years, and um, it started out as a kind of little lump in the gulf, and then the next year it was kind of like a donut, and now it's like half a donut. And so I don't know how much longer it will be there, um, but that's where pelicans. Well, there's no vegetation. It's going to be interesting seeing the wild animals. Different than you here, and here the light works so well for 
out there. It just has to be, I guess, extremely early in March to try to duplicate that or take a new, new tact on what to do with the balloon yes. out there. That one, I more set my camera at a very slow speed, so I photographed the pelicans, and there was motion, visible motion, because yeah, it's there's no there's no shade at all, so you just have to do something different. Same thing with at Grand Isle, yeah, El Elmer's Island, <laughs> but um, I am not an outdoor person, and this is taken great courage for me to um i saw a giant dead snake i swear it was this big around um, in one of my trips and um the owner said his dogs had killed it but that scared the living daylights out of me so i went and bought snake guards for my legs <laughs> you know but I, i'm just not really an outdoors person but i am so um i don't know I just love photographing birds so much that I'm just risking it all <laughs> and um, going for it. Um, I've only seen your color work as a painter or a stained glass artist. Was it strange for you to scale down to strictly black and white? Well, it was because my work, I work with color a lot. But, um, and actually these do, there is color in these, uh, in their beaks and in their feet. When you see, there are a few of them, you can see the feet. But it was a whole different um, mindset to work in black and white. And basically, early in the morning, it is fairly black and white. And, um, did you like any of the color ones that you did? The ones that are just like Mary Ann, full color? Well, you know what? I didn't have it. None of these okay. were full color at all because of the time of day I was shooting. But yeah, I have liked some of my full color ones, but I've always been a fan of black and white photography. I studied um, with A.J. Meek at LSU, and um, I've always used a Canon AE-1. And um, maybe once a year I'll take a few rolls of black and white film so I can still work with that. Um, but yeah, it is. For me, it's a whole different mindset, and it's you know working with values. But I work with values in color too. It's just um, values and tones, and black and white is a little bit different approach. Your color is almost reflex, you know, because the well, light is what really pops out. You know, so the receives back. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it is a hard thing, isn't it, to <clears throat> look at color? Because you really see color sometimes and get, so, wow, that's really cool. But tell I'm a black and white purist, you know, and you, you know, my wife and I have this argument all the time. <laughs> well, it's, and I'm, I like to think of it as figure ground, and that's why I called this series Out of the Darkness Into the Light, because that's kind of what was happening when I saw it, and it was like figures were appearing out of the background and then fading back into the background, and so, um, yeah, that the, the black and white ones over here are the out of the darkness ones because they're more veiled. And these are more about coming into the light. Marion, can you talk a little bit about showing photography itself? I think most people who are familiar with your work know your glass work or maybe even your paintings, but this is the first time maybe they, they've seen photography work. Can you talk about well, you know, I I photographed from when I was a little girl. I used to have a brownie camera, you know? mm -hmm. um, but I've just really never shown my photographs, and I don't know why. It's I guess because I was busy showing my stained glass or my mosaics or my paintings. But um, this time, when I looked at the photographs, I usually use photographs as inspiration for my other mediums. But this time, I didn't think I could do anything to make it better than the end product of the photographs. And um, so that's why I chose to show these this time. Any other questions for Marianne? Thank you very much.